Welcome, everybody. This is something that I am uh, so excited to finally let the world in on. Like, you know how you have something in your mind that you want to do, something that you're praying about, something that you might have even been talking about. But when you're actually there in the moment, you just really feel like this, this is something big. And so I'm hyped to invite you guys in and let you guys into my show. I'll just let myself in with Lish Speaks. And in this show, we're going to talk about not waiting for other people to give you opportunities, um, not procrastinating, not uh, reading yourself and researching yourself and even praying yourself into a, a spirit of waiting, but actually allowing those things to propel you forward to do the very things God has put in your heart to do. I'm super hyped to have y'all here. We are literally in my living room. So I'm literally letting y'all in to my life every single week. Um, and for season one, we're going to have about eight episodes. And so I'm super just, I'm just excited. I'm just excited to let y'all in. Uh, I got a few of my favorite people in the room with me. I might hear them laughing and joking in the background. Um, and so uh, we're going to have a good time. And uh, this is episode one. Welcome to I'll Just Let Myself In with Lish Speaks. So for our first segment, what we're going to do each week is something called letting y'all in, right? And so this is a segment where I'm literally gonna just be putting y'all on and letting y'all in to things that are working for me these days. So for the first segment, I'm letting y'all in to the idea of playing songs on repeat. I know, I know this is something that, you know, some people already do, um, but this is something that I hold dear. Like this is a practice that I've been doing since I was a very young child. Um, and it carries me. Like sometimes it could be hip hop, it could be gospel, it could be Spanish music, like literally any song. I will get fixated on it and play it and play it and play it and it will like help to calm my anxiety. And so I want to let y'all lend to this, this idea of finding a song this week that makes you feel good, makes you feel happy, makes you feel relaxed, um, makes you feel encouraged and just play it on repeat. Let that thing go. Keep it playing. Now, the people that you live with, your spouse, your family, your roommates, they they, they might be mad at you. They, they might hate you, but your heart will thank you. And so I'm gonna let y'all in to going ahead and, and playing songs on repeat for this segment. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Alicia Blaine, I'm commonly known as Lish Speaks. I am a youth minister, I am a recording artist, an actress, a public speaker, um, and I pretty much just do whatever needs to be done, like most black women, right? <laughs> we, what do I do? What I have to, right? And so here in this podcast, you know, my goal and my desire is to really encourage people um, to go through the doors that, that God has for them. And so with the title, I'll Just Let Myself In and exploring the idea of what that means, um, I want you guys to think about this. Usually when someone says, I'll just let myself in, or if someone says, you can just let yourself in, it means that the door is already open or there's some sort of mechanism to unlock the door, right? It means somebody left the key under the mat. There's a key and a little fake rock on the side. Like you can just let yourself in means that the door is already open, right? And so when we have opportunities to do things or we want, rather when we want opportunities to do things and we're telling ourselves, oh, you know, I just don't know the right people or I don't got a seat at the table or, you know, I need better connections. I need to network. It really is um, kind of poo-pooing on the fact that God has put us in a place where we can just let ourselves in. And so for me, I, I've been exploring this idea for some time now on a personal level. And what y'all gonna learn about me is I ain't never gonna come speak to y'all about something that I have not been wrestling with, studying out, figuring out for myself. Um, because uh, I, I ain't speaking or preaching from a place of perfection, right? I'm, I'm coming to y'all with what I'm still dealing with and grappling through. So for me, for 2024, one of the things I decided was, listen, I'm, I'm just going to let myself in, right? I am going to just go ahead and do the things that God has put on my heart to do. Now, what that does not mean 
is to decide to do whatever you want if the spirit hasn't moved you in that way if you don't have the gifting for that thing like there's a larger conversation that we can have about those things but we all know that there's some things that are just on our heart to do right are just within our wheelhouse and in our talent to do and so we got to ask ourselves like what's stopping us right and so for me um i i got a lot of things that have stopped me over the years um one of them that, that I found to be, um, I guess the most damaging is when we lose the belief in ourselves, right? Like believing in myself again has really taken me on a journey. And so what does it mean to let yourself in? For me, it means to believe in myself again, right? Um, just to give y'all a little bit of background, you know, um, in 2016, um, I put out a project that was called Melanated. Now, this is before everybody was running around talking about melanin and, and so happy to be black, okay? This is this is right before that, that happened. And so I was a little bit ahead of the curve, but it was great. I got pretty good recognition from it. I made some connections. I was kind of moving and shaking in New York City, which is where I'm from, but at Brooklyn. Um, and it was great. I was having a great time. Um, I was uh, working in a church in New York in ministry. And for many, many reasons, after a while, things kind of just fell apart. Um, and, you know, sometimes things fall apart because of you. And I think for me, that might have been easier to deal with. But in this particular instance, it really wasn't my fault. And so I was just flabbergasted, right? I just was, I was hit hard. And I really couldn't understand why things didn't work out the way that I had worked so hard for them to work out. Why things didn't work out the way the people around me who were on my team and who were helping me had worked so hard for them to work out. And I got to a point where I was really struggling mentally and emotionally. You know, um, I don't use the word depressed a whole lot or like the idea of having depression a whole lot because I just know some people who really deal with that on a different level. And so I don't want to proclaim that if that wasn't really my situation, but it was the most depressed I had ever felt, just in the rawest definition of the word depressed. Um, I was struggling mentally, um, just really low. Um, and I stopped believing that I could be successful. I stopped, it's almost like when you, <laughs> when you realize that Santa Claus is not real as a kid. Now, I never really believed in Santa Claus. At growing up because I'm from the hood and my mother was like ain't no fat white man getting all the credit for all this money I'm spending on Christmas but <laughs> I would liken it to that idea to when a kid realizes like oh wait this is hard or people snake you or you know people betray you like wait a minute you know because I think a lot of time in Christian spaces especially when you're young man you forget the humanity of people you really believe like we're all in this together we're all fighting to be like Jesus and we are but people are human. And so I think I went through a period of like sadness about that, mourning certain relationships or like what I thought my future was gonna look like. Then I moved to Atlanta and was trying to figure out myself there, here rather. And, um, you know, resetting my whole life. And I realized later that during that time, in some ways I had stopped believing that I could do the things that God put on my heart to do. And so fast forward, you know, God starts putting different things into my life and different people in my life. And I'm realizing like, man, I should really, I should really go after some of these dreams I have. Like this, doing this show has been on my heart for years, years, like at least five years. You know what I mean? Doing a show like this. And so it's gone through many different iterations, names, you know, co-hosts, no co-hosts, you know, whatever. But I have always had this vision and for some reason, I just didn't necessarily believe that I could do it. And I had to really fight through that. Um, you know, forcing myself to actually just walk through the door of many different opportunities in my life um, has, has really given me a different perspective on letting myself in. And so one of the things that I want to encourage you guys to do is figure out a small way that you can start the thing you want, right? Maybe you want to record a whole EP of music, but you're like, I ain't got no money for no studio time, right? What can you do? Can you write every day? Can you go on YouTube and listen to beats? 
Can you reach out to some of your local producers or engineers and see what you can barter? Like, what can, what small thing can you do to go ahead and make a way for yourself? Because the truth is, the doors really are already open if you decide to go through them. Um, another thing I realized, though, is people are literally waiting on you to do something so that they can support you. You will think that people have forgotten about you if you, it's been a long time since you've done something. If you're creative and you haven't been creating, you will think people have forgotten about you. People don't care. I'm telling you, the second that you put something out, everybody will start supporting you. They will start reposting. They will start sharing. Opportunities will come out because people are just literally waiting on you to give them something to support. I'll never forget having a conversation um, with a friend of mine um, who works for uh, works in the music industry. And he literally was like, the second you give me something consistent to support, I got you. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's hard to tell somebody about a song that came out five years ago. You know what I mean? And the song could be incredible. But you have to have some current things going on. And so for me, I'm realizing that whatever it is, right? And you can pivot because this is a pivot for me. This show is a pivot for me, you know? Some of the content that I've been doing that you guys have been seeing if you follow me on social media, it's a pivot for me in some ways, but it's also such a natural part of who I've always been. And so don't be afraid to start small, do something, take a small first step toward what you want to do. This next segment is called In My Mind. And in this segment, I'm going to be kind of let you guys know where I'm at mentally, emotionally. Again, sometimes it'll be fun and funny. Sometimes it might be a little bit more heavy and serious. But in this segment, you guys are going to get a little peek into my mind. And what's been on my mind slash in my mind uh, this week is really the desire to see people who pray consistently be rewarded in 2024. I love to pray. I don't care what's going on. I'm going to pray. If I'm with you, I'm going to ask you to pray <laughs> um, because I love my friends. I love my family. I love my ministers and everything else. But if I can talk to the master, why would I be talking to the servant? OK, so that's why I love prayer. And for me, you know, I know what it's like to pray for something for a long time and feel like it's just not happening. You know, there's a scripture that talks about a dream deferred makes the heart sick. And I've been in that space before. You know, I've been in that space in many things, but the, the, the place that's bubbling up to the top of my heart right now is um, in the area of being single. You know, um, I just got married in uh, August of 2023. Um, my husband's sitting right over there, y'all. He is so fine. Um, I can barely focus. But anyway, <laughs> um, I got married in 2023. And I got married at 35 years old, right? And so it was, you know, I've been a Christian since I was a teenager. Um, and I made vows to God and I kept them vows. So it was really a, a hope deferred for a long time. I was like, Lord, this is rough. I watched so many of my friends get married people that I helped come to Christ, people that were 10 years younger than me, literally. Like, I'm like, okay, what's happening, Lord? Like, I'm following you. I'm serving you. I'm trying to do the right thing here. What is happening? Um, and I remember just really struggling to believe that God was hearing that prayer um, and was going to honor that prayer. And I remember having thoughts like, well, God, I know you can do it for other people, but maybe it's just not in your cards for me. Like, maybe it's just not for me. Um, and the truth is, marriage is not a promise, right? It, it, the Bible doesn't promise us that we will get married. But the Bible does say that if you delight in the Lord, He will give you the desires of your heart. And that was just a desire of my heart. And by the way, while I'm here, let me say this, okay? Um, please stop telling single Christian women that, the, that God didn't promise them a husband. I've had people who I love, friends of mine, who, sat, who said things like that to me before I was married. And I'm thinking to myself, if a woman really, really wants a baby and she's struggling with infertility, no one says to her, God didn't promise you children. That is such an insensitive thing to say to someone who desires marriage. And I get, I get what you're trying to do, but it's not giving what you think it's giving. Right? Like, 
find something else to say to single women. Encourage them a different way. Um, because again, it can come off very God didn't promise us a lot of things, but he give he, you know, he gives he gives to his children. And so I just needed to say that because that was something that used to really get on my nerves. But back to our regularly scheduled program. Um, I was really praying for a long time for God to to give me um not just any man, but a man of integrity and a man who who really loves him even more than he loved me. And I was praying very specific for very specific things, very specifically for very specific things. Shout out to my best friend, Diamond. We used to pray together all the time. Um, and she actually is the one who set me up on my blind, my first blind date with my husband. And so um, God used her for more than prayer, but to actually introduce us. Um, and it, it just ha- got me thinking, you know, for all the years that I was praying and praying and praying, when God finally answered that prayer, y'all, he answered the prayer. Like it was, you know, when, when, the, when the Bible says you can do immeasurably more than all you can ask or think, like I look at my life and it is immeasurably more. Like no cap, y'all, there, there are things that I don't even be wanting to tell people because it's just going to sound like I'm bragging or things that my husband will say to me or do for me that I'm like, if I said, if I told people this, if I made a reel about this, or t- people will think I'm lying because it's just so romantic. And so I, it's, it is, it's just incredible. Like, you know what I mean? I, I think about my life and I'm like, wow, you know, um, I, I could go on and on. I'm saying all this to say, I pray that this year, whatever you have been praying for, for the last 10, 15, 20 years, some of us, the last five years, the last two years, I'm praying that in 2024, you see it. Because what it will do, it will elevate your faith and it will elevate your witness, right? You'll be in a situation where you can not only um, tell people, you know, what you've been praying about or what you're, what you're, what you're praying for, but what God did. And you can tell people, I know him to be a healer. I know him to be a restorer. I know him to be an answer of prayers. Um, there's so many other things I could talk about, even just besides me being married, just, you know, God just reuniting things in my family. And there's just so many things that God has done. So many prayers that he's answered that took a long time for him to answer. And so I'm just praying. It's it's, it's in my mind and it's on my heart that those of you who have been praying for something for a long time, get the answer yes in 2024. That's what's in my mind. And this has been the first episode of I'll Just Let Myself In with Lish Speaks. Thank y'all so much for joining. Um, I'm super excited for what this season has to bring. We got some amazing guests, some incredible topics. And I just know you're going to be super encouraged. Listen, follow us. Uh, follow me at Lish Speaks on all social media platforms. Follow my YouTube. Go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube where the podcast will be available. Uh, rate, review, and subscribe to wherever you find podcasts uh, here. Uh, and we'll just be we'll be here waiting for you. Um, I'm super excited because we have an incredible guest coming on next week that I know is going to encourage y'all, uh, make y'all laugh, <laughs> and really just help y'all leap with some nuggets. So come on back and holla at us. Same time, same place next week. I just let myself in. We out. Yeah, I might have a-